So I was looking for a way to truly show you how I envision the things I'm looking at, the things I'm looking for in a reference photo. And one of the ways I love to approach paintings is with that flat first wash that is very simplified and flattens everything that isn't a highlight, right? So in this example, here's how I'm gonna approach it. This is our scene, right? A beautiful car stuff, details, whatever, right? And then this is how I see the first wash. And that's the thing you really want to uh, strive towards. If you can see only the things that aren't a highlight, okay? And when I put this photo in Photoshop and I posterized it, it actually made the entire ground white. But I changed it, I edited it so that it includes the ground. Why? Because I personally want to show that crosswalk here. It's very important for me to show it. Um, it's to give it a sense of street and depth and whatever, right? Uh, but the, the key he, thing here is you need to develop the ability to see everything that isn't a highlight, right? So here, it's complex, there's a bunch of details. How do we get to a point where we see just the things that aren't a highlight? That's how you do it, uh, and that's how I envision it. Now, I'm gonna show you real fast, but we're gonna use it for the next stages. This would be my second wash, still big shapes, but darkening only like some necessary details. For example, the entire car in shadow, the bus in the shadow, right? Um, some of the trees, some details on the building, and then lastly, we're gonna have this for the darkest darks. And that's gonna be another wash on top of that where we bring out just the darks. So let's do this first example using only this. How do we see the first wash? Uh, and then we'll get to the next one. So I'm gonna get started on this one. Uh, again, just a flat wash. I like to use the leftovers on my palette, even though they're colorful and I plan on doing this with neutral tint. I find it's just a good mixing basis. So I'm just gonna add my neutral tint on top of that, okay? And I have my picture in front of me, but you get to see it digitally. And I will put a link to everything, right? The scans, the, the different stages that, that I shared with you. And I really want you to train yourself to see the matrix. Now look at my setup here, tiny piece of paper, big brush. Because one of the things I find from experience, from students, that's just a, a recurring theme, is people get too caught up on the small details and they obsess over the shape of the leaves and the tree. No, I don't have time for that. I cannot afford doing that. What I want you to do is see the big shape as it is, as I'm showing it to you right now, by the way, in the reference photo. If you can follow that, you'll be fine. Once you get good enough in that, then you can start being fancy and actually start thinking about lifting and charging and doing all those sorts of things, right? But for now, look at that. The, that truck here is gonna connect directly to the foliage, right? There may be a few highlights here of the buildings right on this side, but most of them is gonna, are gonna get completely painted over, right? And then this goes dark, and then we reach down onto the highlight on this car, right? Uh, and to be perfectly honest with you in this set, I'm, I'm gonna paint over the ground too. But before we do that, let's real fast take care of this side. Look at how fast I'm taking care of it, right? Make the brush bigger if you have to. Make the piece of paper smaller. I cannot afford you obsessing over the details. No need to. Just put down the shape as you see it, as accurately as possible, and you'll do good. Okay? Then we'll get this background, and don't obsess over the small shapes. We're looking for the overall themes here. Here's a highlight. We know we need to avoid that, right? And you can see it in the, this version of the reference photo. So that's a highlight. I'm gonna avoid that, right? I'm gonna paint, there's a car here. I'm gonna be careful and paint very carefully around that highlight and get the shadow under it, because that is visible. Then get a few of these details in the distance, right? Then I am gonna paint the ground, as I mentioned. So let's continue that bus. And then let's connect everything actually to the ground. That's gonna start light, okay? The ground is indeed starting light. Um, so you can vary it if you want to create a bit of a more uh, accurate impression. But here's the important part. Let's get that crosswalk here, right? That's the only reason I'm even uh, including the ground in the darkening process. And then we're gonna get this car here. And we're gonna remember to fill in that area too of the shadow, this area can connect completely here, the back of the car, and look at that beautiful, beautiful impression we've created here of this scene, right? And then maybe you wanna do some variation so you can get the lower section a little darker, as is common in these scenes. But to be honest with you, this is still wet. 
because I worked fast. So I could, in theory, grab some paint and get some more work done. I wasn't planning on doing it this way, uh, but I will. I will just to show you, okay? Show you how fresh this can still be, right? And you can carve out the shape of the car. And let me grab my other reference that actually shows all the values so that I know what I'm doing here. Get those shadows on the tires. Uh, shadow under the bus is relatively dark compared to the ground and I have to use very thick mixture, right? Now, I don't want to get too swallowed up in this process because honestly, that's not the goal for me here with this very first demo. I just wanted to demonstrate how you paint a flat wash in a controlled way, right? Maybe the window here will help us kind of finalize that impression. Uh, but honestly, for now, we don't, we don't need uh, too much, right? So that's the scene and it kind of reads like a street scene. Uh, I think it reads really well for this tiny piece of paper, right? So that concludes our first demo. If you want to be fancy, of course, you can blend those edges if you want to maybe loosen up some of the foliage. And to be honest, you can kind of still do that if you just come back with a bit of a, a, bit of a wet brush, you see, and I kind of just spread the paint out, you know? It's not going to be perfect, but it's going to maybe loosen an edge here or there. Um, <clears throat> but that is the process. Okay, now let's switch over to this one. I'm gonna rearrange the camera and we can get started on that second scene. For every stage I'm doing here, I'm going to show you, and I don't know why this piece of paper got so far here, but that's okay, we'll leave it. Um, I'm gonna show you for every step the, the relevant reference photo. So now we're doing the same thing, this step, okay? And I may do some fancy wet and wet, uh, but I want, you know what, let's drop it. I'm not gonna do some fancy wet and wet. I want you to really see the matrix and I want you to see how every wash works, okay? Now, the, the funny thing is there isn't too much to know about the mixing. The only thing I want you to pay attention to is I mix enough, okay? I need a lot of paint here. It's gonna be a little lighter than the previous wash we did, uh, but let's get to it. Now it's larger, so you could, in theory, go into more details right on, on all of the details pretty much. Uh, let's go a little bit darker. So you could, in theory, uh, get some more details in. Uh, I'm not gonna bother, honestly. I just want you to see how this whole thing works together. So we have the tree coming from the side. And here you go fast, okay? No obsession, no obsessing over the small shapes. Did I get this perfectly? Uh, does it look good? No, you cannot afford that, okay? Don't do that. That's really counterproductive. Just think about connections, see? There's no highlight on this truck, actually, so I'm just gonna bury it in the first wash again. Uh, same on this side. And now it's time to be a little careful, right? Observe the shapes. So again, we reach this point here. We have to be a little careful. One more note I forgot to mention, but it is important. The more accurate you are in the drawing stage, the better the result is gonna be. That's just how it works, okay? So don't obsess over the drawing, right? But if you can draw trace, I actually trace this just for time's sake, and I'm gonna work on that second uh, different section real fast here. And if you need more time, spray some water. But in any case, I traced it. Uh, because I wanted to, to get the drawing down fast. You can do the same. It's not cheating. It's all fine, right? Uh, but get something there that tells you where to paint, right? You see my lines lead me and they, they don't include um, information that's unnecessary. They only include what I need to figure out where I'm going to paint what, okay? So as I reach these cars, again, got to be a little more careful and then paint. This is a highlight. Be careful around that. And then we continue the wash. Same for this side, right? Uh, and it will make perfect sense, okay? You will see. Now I'm gonna bring in some water. Let's do this very mild variation here and get this section of the wash a little lighter, like that. And then cut through these, right? These crosswalk lines. And the funny thing is you can get just one of them looking decent and then the impression will still be there. So you can get kind of one that looks all right and the rest is a little wobbly, but it will still make sense in the grand scheme of things. And then let's get this shadowy side of the car, including the back with the forms, right? Try and get the forms as accurate as you can. The more accurate you're gonna be, the better the end result is gonna be. And look at how fast I'm going, okay? This wash is fast. And the only variation I'm gonna do is near the foreground where I'm just gonna darken a bit, okay? Because that's something I wanna get loosely. I wanna get that with a loose transition. I don't wanna have to go back and do it later, okay? So this is gonna be our slightly darker foreground. And let's spray some water. Sorry for the ambulance. Let's spray some water, get it moving. 
change the angle, get it moving down, okay? And then we're, we're gonna give this a few seconds to dry and come back and start taking care of the next washes. One thing you do want to do, soak back excess moist, okay? Uh, but in any case, let's wait for this one to dry. Okay, all set, this wash is done. Now let me show you, the next wash is where some people make the mistake of jumping straight into the details and people who are detail oriented and may obsess over the details do that and that's still not the stage to be doing that. So let me show you. Right now, I'm still looking at big shapes when I'm darkening, so what do I mean by that? Everything that's white, we're not gonna touch here. But everything that is dark, that's what we're gonna paint over. So, this tree, the shadowy part of the truck, right? Under the car, the bus and under the bus. Uh, don't throw anyone under the bus. Uh, this car here, under the car, the shadow, right? Everything else, some details on the building, right? It's very tempting to start just putting in random details, but they actually have a pretty clear shape, right? Now, one quick caveat or note rather. Here I represented this as a very dark value. We're not gonna go this dark. Um, if you look at this full reference photo, right? It's not fully dark. We need to save our darkest darks for the last stage. So now we're gonna follow a mid to dark value kind of structure. So let me show you how I approach that. And then the thing I talk about a lot that the idea of context starts to come into play because once you start filling in the values, the context of the painting uh, gets its meaning, right? Now, one thing to remember is we're painting over an existing wash. So we don't have to go as dark because we're already getting the value of the wash underneath, right? So basically, my guideline is this, don't go too dark so that I don't leave room for the shadowy, darkest wash, but go dark enough so that it's distinct from our previous wash, right? Now you may ask yourself, why why do we even do the foliage in two steps? Why not just get it as dark in, in, in the beginning? Well, there, definitely, go ahead and do that if you can, right? That's the thing with putting wet and wet, doing uh, a lot of wash manipulations as I've shown you in some of the recent videos, right? You do want to do that. The only thing is, if you're not skilled enough, maybe it's smarter to divide this into separate washes. That's the only kind of caveat here, okay? Um, so, we'll continue with that. Now we do, I do see a bit of a, that kind of highlight, so we're gonna paint negatively around that. We're gonna leave the top of that truck uh, kind of as it is. Let's close this off here. Now, now here you see, you need to start thinking, right? So this is a little bit of a harder wash, but still not the end of the world because you actually see the exact shapes. For example, I move down here and then there's an area I shouldn't touch. Maybe it's a sign, maybe it's a whatever it is. I skip that, right? Uh, uh, and that's exactly the time to be paying attention to this. Now, if I don't, if it's very hard and there's a lot of details, I'm just gonna wing it, right? I'm gonna go like this. It's a small enough piece of paper that I can afford that. But here, for example, it's just a few windows and details, right? And then down below, that's where the awning of the restaurant and whatever that is goes, and then I need to cover it completely, right? So that goes here. As for the truck, inside of it, we're gonna darken, but this is gonna be left as a uh, same value, right, the light value. Same goes for this back, I don't know, it's a reflective kind of uh, surface, maybe for uh, just uh, safety and security. Then left side of the truck, same kind of deal, we do get a dark line here, but then we skip the rest, right? Under it, there's a shadow, let's do that. And then we get to, uh, let's finish up this wash, so we have a shadow here, this bicycle, here, a tire, whatever, barely visible, right? And then let's handle the car, right? At this stage, we have the privilege of doing small shapes, right? We don't have to tackle the whole thing at once, uh, like the previous wash. Still big shapes, right? But we can work in sections, unlike the first wash that kind of merges everything, right? And you may have a first wash that is separate. You may have a first wash that does separate things uh, into a few shapes, right? But this wasn't the case here. We really connected a lot there. So now look at what I'm doing here. Now I'm painting around those door handles for the car, because that's a bit of a highlight, right? That's the vibe I feel. Then the tire, and look at what happens here. Shadow, and then I'm gonna cut through here, cut through here, and we'll leave this beautiful highlight in the middle, right? And it's not even a highlight, it's the mid value from our previous wash. And look at how light this dry, right? So it was smart to go this dark, so that it actually shows. And still, the back of the car, and the shadow underneath are still one big shape. So we're still not at a point of really bringing out the small details, but do note this little highlight right there, right? And again, I'm holding myself back from being tempted to 
uh, just start pouring wet and wet here because I could right I'm skilled enough but let's skip that and see how we do that in the next wash okay now th these buildings I'm gonna interpret most of this details as, as light right so I'm just gonna get this tree in here um, let's get this down let's be careful this time negatively painting around a tree because last time I kind of messed it up uh, I mean around the bus rather um, then the tree here that really is gonna wrap with a dark value around that car down here that's really important and we'll cut through here stop here and then we get this front of the car but keeping some highlights for the the headlights of the car and then shadow on the side maybe you want to add just a small touch up here shadow under the car and let's get closer to the actual shape that it should have and then we have a bunch of other maybe it's another car in the distance right something like that you see it kind of paints itself now this area is still dark so let's do that the bus itself is still dark so let's do that and like I really have to hold myself to not just let me just show you just for the sake of this fun demo uh, a bit of charging right a bit of uh, charging is basically putting dark paint because sometimes people ask basically putting dark paint wet and wet that's that's what i call charging right charging is pretty much the opposite of lifting kind of messed up that shape let's fix that and <coughs> if you want to charge let's let's get this bus um in one go okay so tire tire shadow underneath is going to be darker let's get something here that's a little smoother and then we can compare it to the things we won't get smoother and then this section here is going to be darker because that's the windows usually they're black or darker right same goes for this side and we got the bus kind of in maybe we have the front side as well a bit dark and you see it, it kind of makes sense right if you want to create a separation maybe darken the whole side view and you see and you got the bus kind of wet and wet you could smooth now the, the shadow if you want to right you can do a lot uh, but let's not do that here we don't have to let's leave a, even a bit of a highlight there uh, let's get this paint a little not as dark right here um, just so it doesn't compete with the rest uh, but look at what we got here right and we can lift back the headlights if we want it's just a little bit of a tight operation so i'm gonna wait with that uh, and to be honest with you that's the next wash that's we're done like you could add a few of those windows right do you see those around here you could do that but still try and think how you can connect and not be as a, as split in your shapes right if you can connect then it'll be a little better right look for a pattern right maybe sometimes you there's no pattern there's just like small details and that's fine right but if you can look for that pattern just to get something that makes a little more cohesive sense right now uh, let me do if we already did wet and wet on the bus let me straighten out the front by lifting ever so slightly and maybe we can get uh, a bit of a clearer separation here we don't really have to and to be honest with you it's not as light but let's just try okay um and maybe i regretted it and i do want to get rid of the darks here so there we go like that and i'm gonna leave the tires right uh and that's pretty much it for this wash let's let it dry and then come back and add the darkest darks once again wash is dry we're gonna tackle this last stage just the darkest of the darks up for interpretation because we're pretty much done here with most details one thing i did forget is that building in the background you didn't tell me you didn't divert my attention to me forgetting it so let's get just a few details in there because i do want to show you how you avoid going into too many details so that would be actually the previous step here uh, and i'm just gonna get this pattern here uh, this awkward zigzaggy pattern it's a very uh, special building uh, around Dizengoff Street King George area if you're familiar with the place um, but the key here to me is actually just leaving those zigzaggy highlights it's not even about the shadows as much I'm just painting around those and that's see that's a far better impression than if you start uh, putting in those details the first wash you'll never see the end of it you have to be able to kind of postpone that and, and just see it for the next stage and then let's maybe darken this up. Now one more kind of uh, housekeeping thing. Uh, I did want to soften this tree into the distance. Just feels like that is too much of an abrupt shape. But in any case, let's move on and now I'm using a smaller brush. Still using just neutral tint and we're gonna tackle those darks. Okay, uh, and I'm always observing both my 
black and white reference photo as well as that last stage. Now, again, just to emphasize, I don't paint like this normally. I just look at the black and white or posterize. I don't have like a picture for every stage. I'm just doing this to help you visualize it, okay? So I start with dark and let's incorporate a bit of technique here. So let's blend this dark into the lower part of the body of the car because that's how I see it at least. And then let's um, leverage that onto uh, getting some shadows and details on the tires and maybe some wet and wet down here you see so you get that beautiful dark light dark right and that's technique that's something you need to learn to do with time it's not necessarily easy uh, but you will get there with practice right now look at what happens here this shadow kind of cuts through under this area and then let's in fact make use of that and get it down all the way to the cast shadow that is the darkest. That's what defines our black value in this scene. That's the darkest we'll ever go, okay? Uh, so like that. And it's good that it's in the front, right? Because that brings the attention over to the front, to the foreground, and that looks good. Now again, still think in terms of big shapes if you can. That's, to me, that's one big shape, like so, you see? Um, and it's really important to preserve that mindset if you can and still keep connections again you do you work on your style develop um, you know the, the, the way you want your paintings to be but my suggestion would be to still think in terms of connections uh, now let's see now it's just about you know small touches so I would like to darken this a bit further right just to separate it from the trees one could argue this tree is darker than that tree. I don't see any benefit to actually darken it, darkening it, so I'm not gonna. Maybe some details under the awning, which are gonna be quite random and impressionistic for me. Um, maybe something to support that thing here. But that's all left to the viewer's imagination, right? Maybe there was, there was a person here, so let's get that in. Uh, these poles at the edge of the sidewalk. This bus took care of itself, right? We darkened it already in the previous wash. One thing, maybe darken the bottom a bit, like that. Uh, add a few windows here that are a little darker. And the reason you can do that and have it look good is because you have that connection from the previous shape that was very well connected. As long as you get those connections in, it can really help. And then this car, I think the shadow under it could be a little darker without going into too many of the details there. Let's cut this shape a little more accurately, so a bit more diagonal, I guess. Something like this. See, I messed that up. Let's try and fix that real quick. Again, you can fix most mistakes in watercolor, and if you check out my relatively new uh, watercolor realism course, you can actually fix 90% of mistakes. We're gonna leave it at that. It's not the end of the world. It's such a farther detail that it's actually still gonna look good. Uh, and to be honest with you, I think we are done. Maybe you want to strengthen some areas that lost their strength. You can also do this separate, like add layers or details afterwards, um, after this dries as well. Uh, but I'm going to finish it up again pretty loosely and a la prima. One thing you could do, uh, and could be very beneficial, is just to add a few highlights, right? So I'm going to take my trusty gel pen, and I do see a bit of a highlight here on the headlights of the bus. So why not get that kind of up? Maybe get a bit of a highlight here. Uh, I do see some light catching this spot. And of course, we've interpreted this very simply, right? If you see more nuances that you want to do, the car, for example, you can do that. So for example, this is a little darker, see? And then it smoothens out um, around the bottom like that. So if you see these little things, no, no reason to shy away from them, uh, especially now when you kind of got the overall impression in the way you want to. Uh, you can definitely, um, you know, put in some more effort into getting those curves of the car or whatever, right? Maybe there's a detail that goes through here and you don't really see it, but you know it's there, like this diagonal line, whatever it is that helps the impression. Uh, do I see some more highlights maybe within those shadows? There's a person here or there. Maybe that's the shoulders, right? Maybe that's another person. That's the head and then some shoulders, right? Just something very loose. Um, what else do I see here? There's no need to force it, right? Don't force the highlights if you don't see them. Maybe in this car, right? Uh, a bit of that. Honestly, I think this one's done. Um, and you get, you see, you get a realistic impression and it's quite 
quite simple if you follow the process. That's the thing I want to drill into you. Just follow the process, follow the values, start with the, if it's something like you can develop a three step process like I did here, or you can develop your own process. But the one thing to remember, um, maybe you know what let's get this slider here let's add some more highlights onto that the only thing really to remember maybe let's get this maybe let's get a bit of separation here maybe strategically it would look good and we should have kept that separation from the right from the first watch right uh, but in case yeah that's the only thing that matters the better you get at it the more you can get and squeeze out of that first wash right so you can get all of it looking like this and really cool and smooth and do a lot of a la prima but when you get started really focus on seeing the specific wash you're working on in this example the specific wash was starting with this right uh, that's uh, that's gonna sorry starting with this covering everything up that isn't a highlight right and then we moved on to this big shapes of shadow still big shapes of value and ultimately the details right but in any case, I hope you find this useful and I'm going to remove the tape and everything and we'll wrap it up face to face. So here we are, final results, remove the tape and I think these look really, really cool. Now I'm going to give three kind of quick plugs. First off, if you want to learn how to let go, enjoy the painting process, paint more loosely, which is actually, funny enough, a big part of doing this kind of work and this kind of work. Be sure to check out the Frustration Free Watercolor course. The link is in the description box below. Now, if you want to be more focused on realism, which is the new course I released, Watercolor Realism, that details this exact method with a bit more emphasis on values, shapes, edges, going really deep on that. Check that out. And final plug, I did open a Patreon tier because quite a few people have been asking for a service of critiques. So if you want to get your paintings critiqued on a regular basis and not like whenever I have time every couple of weeks or every couple of months, be sure to check that out, all the links in the description box below. I really hope you found this technique useful. I just find it honestly great fun. And the more you can move from this to this, to getting more information right down to first wash, it's just great fun and it will really enhance your skill. But don't be tempted to think, okay, I'm gonna work, I'm gonna create something amazing the first try. Work small, big brush, and put a lot of emphasis on the technique, right? And then slowly build it up and grow it in size as well. So. Thank you so much. Don't forget to like, subscribe as always. If you still aren't, comment, let me know your thoughts, and I will see you in the next video.